Hey Run Junkies, with Wine and Dine Weekend coming up in just a couple of weeks and Run Disney's massive changes to the way it distributes information, I want to share a few more tips about how corrals, bibs, and waivers work. In the last few days, the event waivers and the corral assignments did go live on the Run Disney website. So let's talk a little bit more about that information right now. If you want a more detailed video about the virtual event guide for Wine and Dine, all of the changes they've made and some course information you can click on this card right here and I've said it before and I'll say it again if you haven't taken the time to take a look at the new website and how it's all structured I highly encourage you to do that I've left a link to that in the description so first let's talk about the most important piece of information you need going into the expo and that is your waivers there are two places you can find your event waivers First is by heading straight to the Run Disney Wine and Dine homepage. Under the latest updates, you will see the official digital event guide, expo schedule, virtual goodie bag, and event waivers. Click on that link and it will take you directly to Track Shack. You can also find it in another spot and that is in the virtual guide itself under the reminders tab and click waivers. Then it will take you to the exact same place. Input your name and birth date into the appropriate fields, which should bring up your race information. Click print, then click print again. This is my waiver. Once you print it out, sign it and then pack it in a safe place so you can take it with you to the expo. I personally pack it in my carry-on bag. In fact, I carry it in with my laptop and all of the other pertinent information I need to check into my hotel. Your bib number will be on the waiver near the bottom right side of the page. This is the information you need to figure out what corral assignment you have. You need a waiver for each event in which you are participating. The 5K, the 10K, the half marathon. However, if you are participating in the two course challenge, you only need one waiver. If you have minors as part of your party, a parent or guardian must also print out that waiver and sign it and bring it with them to the expo. Lastly, if you are participating in the cheer squad for spectators, you need an event waiver for that as well. Now the guide did not specifically state that there would be waivers available on site. And while they've done that in the past and I can't see them taking that option away, I would just err on the side of caution Get that out of the way. You know you have it. Print it out, sign it, bring it with you. At the expo, you will bring your waiver and a photo ID over to bib pickup at the pavilions near the arena. All race bibs can be picked up here, including your kids' races bibs. If you or your friends or family are participating in the cheer squad, you will pick up your wristband and swag bag at this location in the arena. If you are running the two course challenge, you get one bib for both races. Do not lose that bib in between the 10K and the half marathon. Timing tags are affixed to the 10K, half marathon, and challenge bibs. The 5K is not timed. Now the guide also states that you must pick up your bib at the expo the day before your race starts. Now we get to break down the science and the art that is corral assignment. For corral assignments, again, we're on the Run Disney Wine and Dine homepage. Click on the Runner Info tab and you will see links for the two course challenge and the half marathon corral assignments. The assignments are roughly based on the overall field of participants and the times they submitted as a whole. Also, if your bib number falls in the last few bibs, maybe 10 to 20 bibs in the one particular corral, you're kind of on that bubble. They may push you back a corral or even up a corral just to evenly distribute people. So the letter on your bib may not reflect what you are seeing right now in their corral assignments. This actually happened to me at the Walt Disney World Marathon and they pushed me back to E when my bib number hit in corral D. I was right on that bubble. So if that happens to you, just be aware that it could. This is just to keep runners safe and evenly distributed throughout the corrals. Rules of the corrals. If you are running with friends and you, each of you have a different corral assignment, the earlier party may move back to the later corral, but not the other way around. Now this isn't actually stated in the guide, but it has been a thing in the past for Run Disney events, and it is industry standard. And I don't see it actually changing for this particular event. It does compromise the safety of the runners if you try to move up in corrals. So for example, if you are assigned corral D and your friends are in corral E, you can move back with them. However, if your friend is in corral C, you cannot move up to corral C, but they can move back to D with you. There are cast members and volunteers monitoring bib letters to see if 
everybody is going where they need to go. Now the timing of each corral start may or may not be the same as with past run Disney races. And probably as soon as I tell you what I think they're going to do and when each wave is going to start and how much time will elapse in between each corral, run Disney's gonna change it. Just because they did it a certain way at an earlier event this year does not mean they are going to do it the same way at Wine and Dine. So just keep that in mind, be flexible. Recently though, what they have been doing with corrals is breaking them up into mini waves. So let me explain what that means. So if you are in corral C, there might be three or four separate start times. They'll kind of chunk it up a little bit and they will release runners out of corral C at different times. This again ensures runner safety and it does spread out the field a little bit in the first couple of miles so you're not kind of jockeying for position. I actually really like the system. I hope they use it again. Pacing requirements as set by Run Disney, still that 16 minute mile pace. It's a minimum pace to maintain throughout the event. The balloon ladies, those wonderful volunteers are the last to start the race and they stick to that 16 minute mile like glue. So if you are starting in the last corral for the half marathon, that would be Corral H. You might be starting in the same corral as the balloon ladies, but you could have five minutes on them before they even start. You can do a little bit of runner map to decide where you start in the corrals versus where they're going to start in the corrals. But again, since we don't exactly know how much time is going to elapse in between corral starts, it's kind of a guess. I personally like to assume about five minutes per corral in between me and the balloon ladies. The biggest takeaway here is to arm yourself with as much information as you can going into Run Disney's Wine and Dine weekend. Read the guide, print out your waivers, be flexible, but proactive. The more you know going in, the less hassle and stress you're gonna have to deal with when you get there. But that is it for me today, you guys. If you have any questions about Run Disney's Wine and Dine event coming up, please leave those questions questions in the comment section down below, as well as any other suggestions or comments. Now tomorrow I will be live answering those questions specifically about wine and dine. So I hope you can come back. Please subscribe. You'll get the notification for that. If you want to see a course map preview and a breakdown of the virtual guide, please click on this video right here. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Go find your awesome and until tomorrow, happy running.